Is white label a white knight or white noise? Welcome to Kanpai Planet, I'm Mac, coming to you from Aloha Whiskey Bar in Tokyo, and today we're taking a look at Ichiro's Molten Grain. This video is sponsored by Tipsy Sake. More about them later. The Ichiro of Ichiro's Molten Grain is Ichiro Akto, founder of the Chichibu Distillery. The distillery is located in Saitama Prefecture, just north of Tokyo, and is credited with kicking off what would become Japan's craft whiskey movement. Chichibu focuses on single cask releases more than any other distillery in Japan, so it's interesting that this, Ichiro's Molten Grain, first released in 2011, represents the opposite of that. Often called White Label or White Leaf, it's Chichibu's biggest selling bottle. But what's it all about? This is not Japanese whiskey. It's a world whiskey blended from spirits originating in the five major whiskey producing regions of the world. Japan, the US, Canada, Scotland, and Ireland. It used to be four countries in early batches. There was no Irish whiskey. This is very much a batch product. Every bottle is labeled with a batch number, which you can find on the back label. Over those batches, it has evolved. For example, early bottlings included some fabled Hanyu whiskey. Before batch 110, around 2016, they didn't marry the liquid post-blending, but now they do. They use a marrying tank, leaving some of the previous batch in there and then topping it up with newly vatted liquid. It comes in 700 milliliter bottles in Japan, which cost at RRP, 3,850 yen after tax, that's about 28 US dollars. And best of all, they're actually pretty widely available and quite easy to find. Since 2016, it's been available in some international markets, for example, across Europe, in the US, in Singapore, Taiwan, and Australia. So what's inside this bottle? The liquid weighs in at 46% ABV, and the average age is 10 years old. The youngest components are around five years and the oldest around 20 years old. That varies, of course, from batch to batch. Some of the component whiskies arrive at the Chichibu distillery already aged, and some come as new make, which is aged on site in Chichibu. The number of different distilleries in the mix varies as well. Currently, it's around six to seven distilleries per batch, but in the past, it's been, on the whole, more. Which distilleries? That is, of course, a secret, as is the percentage of each country's contribution to the blend. The target percentages of molten grain that are used are 30 and 70, but that varies from batch to batch. The majority of the component whiskies here are non-peated, but some peated whiskey has been used to add complexity, and the majority of those components have been aged in ex-bourbon casks, but some ex-sherry cask liquid has been used. Each batch releases around 3,500 bottles blended from around 100 casks. Ichiro's Molten Grain is designed to be enjoyed neat as well as across a variety of serving styles. For example, on the rocks, highball, I hear that the man himself, Ichiro, enjoys it, oyuwari, with hot water in the winter. In fact, it's a big favorite of the legend. What is your favorite whiskey that you have produced? Of course. It's good enough for Ichiro. So let's check it out. This is batch 810. You really don't know what you're going to come across in the wild. The shop I picked this up at also had a batch 800. I was in Utsunomiya recently, and the cafe I was at only had one Japan-related whiskey, and that was this, batch 218. Checking out the color, it's bright with a pale gold hue, and I'm very pleased to say that it's non-chill filtered and natural color. On the nose. Well, that 70% grain is very evident. There's a very sweet, very dominant rye note there. That sweetness brings with it vanilla, fudge, toffee, caramel, and milk chocolate. 
Hmm. There are citrus fruits there, such as a lemon, grapefruit, orange, and also some pear and plum. And there is a nail polish note. Hmm. At the back, there is something there that's kind of inflaming the nostrils over and above the spiritine note that I mentioned earlier. All in all, it's quite elegant. Kampai. Okay, so that's what that was. The palette is quite different to the nose. Where the nose is quite sweet, albeit with complexity, the palate hits you with a bit of a kick. Spice. Sweet spice, such as nutmeg and cinnamon that I tend to associate with rye, but also some ginger, some black pepper, and a bit of chili. There's a bit of smokiness from that peated whiskey that they use, and there's that vanilla and fruit from the nose, a bit of banana bread, a bit of caramel, and a bit of Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate British formulation. Also, a bit of hazelnut. The finish is medium. There's a bittersweet spice yin yang. Uh, you're getting some citrus, some caramel, uh, some vanilla, some chocolate, and many of the other notes which we found on the nose and the palate. So, what's the verdict? It's a solid dram. It's not your typical easy sipping blend. You've got that sweetness typical to many blends, but there is a lot more going on, a lot more complexity. From the comments I've received on my Making Sake on Sado documentary series, many of you have been inspired to explore Japanese sake, but understandably, you've no idea where to start. Enter Tipsy. The largest online sake store in the US, they carry over 400 labels, and on the website for each product, you'll find its profile, taste metrics, and serving temperature recommendations. Remember, hot sake is not bad sake. The service they offer, which I think is absolutely fantastic, is the Tipsy Sake Club. Every three months, you receive a curated box of six delicious 10 ounce bottles. Each bottle comes with a card explaining the brewery history, the brand and pairing suggestions, plus a QR code, which links to more info and even a tasting video. Other membership benefits include the Tipsy Sake Guide for Beginners, the Tipsy Tribune Newsletter, and unlimited free shipping for regular orders. Head to the link in the description for more info and to sign up. Code Kanpai Planet will give you a site-wide 10% discount, and Kanpai Planet 30 will give you a whopping $30 off Tipsy Sacker Club membership. Enjoy and can pay. I'm going to put this head to head with Ao. Ao is Suntory's world whiskey blend and is identical in concept to Ichiro's Molten Grain, with all the distilleries whose whiskies are used in the blend owned by Suntory. Check out my full thoughts in this video where I put it head to head with Nika Session. So, doing the color comparison, we're not going to spend too long on this because one of these is natural colour and the other one almost certainly isn't. The nose is a little less sweet than the Ichiro's uh, and a lot fruitier. So I'm getting uh, pears, I'm getting satsuma and I'm getting kiwi. There are also similar notes of vanilla and caramel along with some raisins and malt. And it's a bit smokier at the end than the molten grain. Kanpai? There's fruit there, there's also vanilla, and there's butterscotch, and there's some smokiness and spice, there's some white pepper, and some ginger, and some cinnamon, and some nutmeg, and a vegetal note. That's a lot of the same notes in the owl as in the molten grain, and it wouldn't surprise me if Suntory did take some pretty punchy inspiration from their former employee. But where this is also a pretty easy sipper, it just feels less rounded and less integrated than the molten grain. The finish is medium long, longer than the molten grain. The smoke disappears over time and you're getting some vanilla, some caramel cream, and some herbal and floral notes. So, head to head. When I did a full review of this, I said it was pleasant, it had a nice mouthfeel, but it didn't wow me. And next to the molten grain, it really doesn't wow me. The molten grain has more complexity, more depth, and it's more rounded. 
Owl does have a funkier bottle shape though. I think it'll be fun to compare this batch with an older one. So here is batch 113 released around 2016. This batch contained more component whiskies than recent batches, around 12 or so. The colour is very similar to the 810, but a little darker. Hmm, that nose is much less sweet than the 810, a bit more spirity, and there's a bit more mint, so how to characterise this? A menthol lemon and apple pie. Yeah, nailed it. That sweetness reduces and dissipates over time. All right, that balance of sweet and spice that was in the 810, this is much spicier. Not chili, but more ginger and pepper. There's also some vanilla and some of those sweeter notes, but the thing that's really hitting me is that it's much thicker and there's a much oilier mouthfeel. The finish is about the same length as the 810. I'd say the flavours kind of dissipate quicker, but that oiliness lingers for, well, longer. That bittersweet, spicy and yang I talked about on the 810, much more weighted now on the spicy side. So, head to head. First up, I have to say there is a consistency of profile, which is quite remarkable considering that 700 batches separate these two liquids, but it's more a case of same, same, but different. It's always easier to default to older is better, but in this case, I'm gonna give it to the 810. There's a bit more complexity there and precision, which appeals to me. So, should you buy it? At 3,850 and after tax, $28. It's one I always have on hand. Having tried many batches over the years, it's been a consistently decent sipper and one that adds a new dimension to some of the cliches about Japanese blending. Releasing a product like this makes great business sense. It allows Ichiro Akto to keep the company growing without eating into his maturing stock of in-house Chichibu single malt. And the blending keeps him on his toes. On an average day, Ichiro-san purportedly spends more time in the blending lab than in the still house. The concept has clearly been a winner for Chichibu because there have been several variants and limited edition releases. Oh, and a final thought before the final thought. I've tried out those other serving styles and I can tell you that this makes an excellent highball. A reasonably priced accessible world blend from the rock star of Japanese whiskey? I'll take it. Until next time, Kanpai.